Good day and welcome to basic workshop safety training. This we are going to start with the milling machine. We are going to have a basic introduction. Please always note to wear your safety glasses, wear closed shoes, no loose hanging ties, long hair, everything must be tied back and tucked in. Please also remove all wedding rings, watches, anything that can get caught in the machines. Alright, basically a milling machine we can use to put in slots, steps, holes, anything as required. A milling machine has three basic axes which it moves in. You've got the X axis, you've got your Y axis, and your Z axis. Please note, the milling machine's chuck is a rotational device. Anything that can get caught in there, law says it will get caught in there. So please note, never go within a 4 to 500 millimeter reach of the chuck. Never wear any gloves or anything that can get caught on them. Roll down sleeves and make sure nothing is in the way before starting on the machine. Please ensure your workbench is clean, everything is tidy, floors are not slippery where you are walking on, and the milling machine is in a good condition. If anything is suspicious on the machine, please notify one of the instructors and we will quickly come and have a look at it. If there are any questions or queries regarding the feeds, the speeds, or the depth of cut, also please ask. Closed shoes, safety glasses, is a must. If hearing protection is required, please get it from the laboratories. Good. We will have a look at the machine. We will do a basic cut on the part and then you can see how the milling machine operates and what the limitations are. Throughout the video, there will be some video footage of it, some depth of cuts and any questions or queries can be directed to the instructors after the video. All right. First things first, we need to make sure the chuck which we are the device which we are using is parallel to the movement of the bed. This will ensure a straight cut and accuracy to be perfect. Good, let's view that. We lower the machine's bed to get enough reach, then insert it will be shown that there is a, we call this a clock gauge. You will now see the working of it. In this instance, we place the clock gauge in a normal drill chuck. It can also be mounted in a collet or as required. Move the clock gauge close to the machine being the part being our uh, device being used, then rotate it manually backwards. The clock gauge only has a reach of 1.5 millimeters in 10 micron increments. As can be seen on the clock gauge, the dial moves to a certain value. This value is not of importance, but if need be, it can be set to zero. Then, as we move left and right on the vise, this value must not, general use, be moving more than 20 microns difference. As can be seen on this video, the vise has been clocked and is ready to use. If there are any questions regarding the clocking of the vise, please notify the instructors and we will assist you. Next thing we want to do is choose the job and choose the raw material which we are going to use. Make sure your drawing is by hand and you know exactly what operations are there to follow. This instance, we're going to drill a hole into the center of the part and put a slot to a depth of 50 millimeters into this piece of aluminium. To ensure the part is parallel to the vise and the bed, we use these plates called parallels. 
please beware not to drill into them as they are very valuable and very precise. Any damage to them will definitely be seen on your parts. Place them upright into the chuck. Place your part so it is positioned correctly. And then by means of the handle, tighten your part. It's got a first stage mechanical and a second stage hydraulic mechanism. If it gets a little bit of a push, you'll see two lines indicated on it, which will then show that it's hydraulically clamped and will definitely not be anywhere. Please make sure the faces which are being clamped are per parallel and do have the best effective grip they can possibly have. This part is now secured tightly. We will now move on and we will take a cut to the side so we have a parallel plane to the first side which has already been cut in a previous instance. Then the center of this, center of X, center of Y will give us the center of the part where we want to drill our first hole. Let's put in a milling cutter now. Shown over here is a short two flute slot mill. You also get a four flute end mill, which is more for side cutting, but in this instance, this one will be used correctly. Please check in the laboratories for the charts notifying what feeds and what speeds must be used. This is crucial for every type of material. Okay, let's insert the tool. Good. Now, as we can be seen on the dials indicated on this side, this machine is equipped with a certain feed, mostly in millimeters per minute, and a certain rotational speed of revolutions per minute. Please check the charts to ensure that this is the correct feeds and speeds used. If the wrong feeds or speed or rotational direction is used, the cutter will be immediately damaged. Please try to not do that. All right. Please let us have a look on the side where we're going to move the milling cutter to. We are rapid feeding to the side of the cutter and then we will manually feed until it touches. We will now start the spindle speed in a clockwise direction looking from the top. Make sure everything is tight and correct and clean, no obstructions in the area. We do not get in the vicinity of the cutter as this could grab you and be very dangerous. Please move the x-axis by hand. operation we can take half a millimeter cut in this instance it will be negative 0.5 these dials are accurately to roughly 50 microns if used correctly and clamped correctly now we will now take the cut using the automatic feed which we program into the system 
which is in this instance 143 millimeters per minute. We will also use lubrication or cutting fluid as is required to definitely increase the longevity of the tool. A single cut of 0.5 millimeters has now been taken. If the desired length of the part is not as wished yet, another half a millimeter up to one millimeter cut can be taken. General rule, no more than a third of the diameter of the cutter may be used for any face or side of the cutting. All right. We will now move away as our area is clean to determine the center position of this part. We move the table away to a safe distance, move away the cooler, and remove the tool. Please note the tools are sharp, do not touch them directly. Now we will insert an edge finder, also called a wobbler, to determine the center of the pot. Please note, very importantly, the wobbler may not be used at any RPM higher than 500 revolutions per, min per minute as this will destroy it immediately. Please set your speed to below 500 in the vicinity of about 400 millimeters per revolution. In the workshops, you will find wipes, clean your surfaces every time before use to ensure better accuracy. Alright, we will now go to the site to determine the x-axis center. You will note the wobbler has a thicker end and a thinner end. Please make sure that the area touching the part is definitely the thicker end. In this instance, 10 mm. This does come into importance as can be explained later. Never use automatic feeding with a wobbling. Only use hand. slowly get more steady until it seems as if it is completely steady as soon as the wobbler kicks out that is the true edge of the part there can be noted it kicked out and now due to that we can go back to our digital reader we now know that is the true edge of the part and we can set that edge to zero we then move down in the Z direction and move manually as the diameter of the wobbler is 10 millimeters we can now move 5 millimeters which will then show us the center of the spindle. Five millimeters will now indicate our new zero. This now means that the spindle center is on the edge of the part. 
the same can be done for the other side. Again, we can see the wobbler slowly decreasing. And then at a certain instance, it will kick out again. Thus, we can see now in the digital readout that our part is 205.85. Subtracting the 5 millimeters, it will be 200,85 millimeters in length. Thus, if we move down to, and we reach back to 104, uh, 100.4, sorry. We know this to be the true X0 of this part. This has a significant impact because when machining the part initially, if we wanted it to be 200 millimeters long, it can be seen that the part was actually 0.4 millimeter over the side. Thus, if we only took it from one edge, we would be off by 0.4 millimeters. Please take note of this and realize which is important to you and your project, whether it be center or whether it be relative to an edge. This can be done in the Y direction as well, which has already been done in this video. So now we are ready to draw. Please switch off the spindle direction. We are now going to remove the wobbler and insert the drill. Please pack away the tools where necessary. center drill. It's a very short, stub, strong drill. This normally runs at a very high RPM and can easily be set to more than a thousand RPM. In this instance, we will use one thousand RPM. Please note that we do not drill immediately in one instance. We do what we call pick drilling. You go down about a quarter of the diameter of the drill, you pick it up so the shaving get thrown out and do not clog or overheat the system.
please beware of any shavings and do not touch them by hand. Rather, use a brush. And as well to clean off your area. Beware the drill bit or part might still be hard due to the friction. We now insert the milling cutter we used prior. We set the feeds and speeds. What we will attempt to do now is to cut a slot from the sidewards direction inward of roughly 50 millimeters. We can either, either use the digital readout and subtract the diameter of the cutter or we can use the touching technique again. It is up to you. We will now use the touching method for this instance. On our reader, we will zero our part to ensure we get a depth of 50 millimeters. We will now retract it, activate our coolant. Once we reach a depth of 40, let's first hit the height. Also set that to zero if it has touched on top. Please note we're not going to take a full dip as this is too large for the slot we are making. Never take more than half the diameter of the cutters, the half the diameter of the cutter in depth of cuts. Thus in this instance we will take a cut of five millimeters which will be set manually. We will now use the X speed up to a distance of 45 millimeters before ending off the last 5 millimeters by hand as it is almost impossible to stop the machine's automatic feed on correct position every time. Thank you. 
distance, we now stop the machine before viewing. I can see there's still a slight bit of material left, so the last two millimeter cut will now be taken. machined as current, I will now, if the part would be taken out now, it'll be, you'll have to re-clock the X, re-clock the Y, re-clock the Z to determine your previous positions. Please ensure that the part that you have made now is finished and completed up to date. Please do not start off and stop halfway throughout a part. We will now visually have a look. As can be seen on this part, it still has a lot of burrs. We may use a deburring tool, sanding paper, whichever is required to make the product finish so it has no sharp burrs, burrs to cut or damage anything. Thank you for listening to the milling introduction video. If there are any questions or queries, please take it up with the instructors and be safe. Welcome to the lathe introduction for the workshop. We will quick have a brief introduction session on the safety of the equipment and then have a look at the capacity of the machine and the cuts being taken. Please note to wear the correct PPE as provided. No loose clothing, nothing, no long hair, all should be bound back, tied down, no long sleeves. Please note in this instance that the chuck turns and the tool is stationary. That's the other way around than we know it of the milling machine. Please beware as the chuck has quite a big moment of inertia and if it catches you, it won't stop immediately. Please also note that the correct feeds and speeds are chosen. As can be seen on the chart below, the minimum speed is 22,4 RPM to a maximum of 2,000 RPM on this machine. Please note that the correct revolutions per minute with the correct feed should be chosen to create the perfect surface finish and the perfect shaving. This will be shown to you later on. Please ensure that the, your area is clean of any obstacles. Please ensure that nothing is in the way of the rotational chuck. Make sure the coolant is working. Ensure the safety switch is working. Please note the shavings coming off normally are long strands. They are definitely able to cut you and should never be touched by hand, but rather by tools which can be asked for by any of the instructors. We will have a quick look at the speeds and the feed setup of this machine where after we will have a quick introduction on the cutting of it and the hazards applicable on it. Please make sure that the floor you're standing on is not wet, not slippery as this will cause damage if you slip and fall into the chuck. As said, we have a maximum speed of 2000 RPM and to the chart right of this, all of the machines do have them, we can select rotational, uh, we can select feed which is millimeters per minute uh, per revolution. This can be seen and used accordingly to the different materials. If unsure, please consult one of the instru instructors. The speed selection is done by these levers indicated on the machine itself. In this instance, we're going to turn at roughly 500 RPM, which can be seen on the chart. That indication over there will show us 
this way with the bigger lever being to the right hand side. To switch on the machine, the feed has been set correctly prior. To set on this machine, please remove all the emergency stops by turning them clockwise, pressing the green button thereafter. For the demonstration purposes though, to fasten your clock, make sure the emergency stop is working and is currently switched off. It is of high importance before clamping the material or the part needed which you are going to machine that this machine part be clamped in using the T-spanner. The T-spanner is the most dangerous part on a lathe. Please take note of this. Should the T-spanner ever be in the chuck without your hand on it at any given time, you will be asked to leave the workshop and not return. If you are not tightening your part, the chuck key is either to the side or in the cupboard. This is of high importance and should be noted. If the machine would be turned on with a chuck key in it, big damage, self damage can definitely be inflicted. We will now change and we have a look at how the parts going to be clamped, where after we will perform some operations. The lathe consists of two axes only, not like the milling machine. It consists of a y-axis, which is turned by this lever, and it consists of an x-axis above that, turned by this lever. Please note that all our machines, as can be seen later on the footage, does also come with digital readouts, accurate to also about 50 micron tolerances. That is def definitely up to the rotational speeds and surface finishes as well. The machine consists basically, once we have turned it on, to activate the spindle in the correct rotation that is turning towards you, this lever on your right hand side gets pushed to the side and downwards. For 99% of all operations, that is the rotation which you will use. Later on, if necessary, an instructor will tell you how to cut thread and then only will you push it to the side and upwards. This however is not normally used by students. Please note that all our machines are also equipped with automatic feeds. Automatic feeding ensures a clear surface finish more accurate than you could by hand. At the beginning of the day you move at 20 millimeters a minute at the end of the day, you'll be moving at 50 because you want to get your project done. This, however, is easier controlled by automatic feed. Please note, if the machine is started and the automatic feed is activated, it will move automatically, as can be seen by this dial on my hand. Please note, though, that this automatic feed is directly connected to the shaft below on a solid gearbox. Please note, however, that if I do this wrong and I only switch off the machine, this dial would still be moving. The correct press and if I have forgotten the automatic feed on and I would switch this machine on, the gearbox connected will automatically start. This causes an issue as we are mostly working within the last 10 millimeters of the chuck. Please note, if you are using the automatic feed as it, as it is running now, please disengage the automatic feed first. At this instance, the machine is at a complete standstill in movement wise. Then only do we turn off the lathe. This will cause the part not to jump into the machine and definitely no parts of the chuck or machine itself or the person using it getting hurt. We will now insert the part into the chuck as explained previously where we will then take a face cut, drill a center hole after we've done the tool setups. Let's quickly have a look at the tool setup. This way we can see as indicated previously in an anti-clockwise direction, the jaws will open. Our part can then be inserted 
because we are drilling a center hole only, we insert it far, not to have any vibrations on it. We activate it tightly, we remove the T-spanner, and we place it safely next to us. Now, we, want to, we wish to take a face cut to ensure that the face being cut is completely perpendicular to the part inserted into the machine. For this, we use a cutter which looks like this. This is the most top point of it with all the angles negative relative to it. We place it into the tool holder. We move our x-axis inwards. We move our y-axis. This is all done manually. Then we visually inspect the height of the tool so the tip of the cutting edge is in the center of the part that is being laid. If this is untrue, this set screw at the top can be used to pull it either upwards or downwards. Please ensure when it is tightened that the tip is visually in the center of the part. Please tighten the tool holder tight into the tool post. Ensure the tool which you are using is sharp and in a decent cutting condition. We can now, by moving the y-axis, touch the part, we can visually feel it, then we can go to our digital readout and we can clear it so we have a reference point by pressing Y and clear. Now we can move back safely as we've already referenced our part, extract the x-axis to beyond the size of the part which we are going to machine. In this instance we are going to take a 0.2 millimeter cut so if we look at the digital readout this will then be at negative 0.2 millimeters where after now I will switch on the machine in the correct rotational direction and move forward by hand not with automatic feeding it's about surface speed thus the further you reach the inner core diameter of the part the slower you must start feeding but a nice visual representation of this would be to look at the shavings and the shaving manner you are looking for a shaving that's about three centimeters long and chips off or if need be an ongoing shaving please listen to the machine carefully as this will give you the best indication of the machine are gone and no rotational parts are in there please note that the digital that the dials are set quite far away from the part itself thus there is no need for you to place your head anywhere else than on the dials themselves we will now visually inspect the part and see that it is correct we will now take away the tool holder as our next mission would be to put a center hole in the part and drill a hole so we can pull it out keep it steady with the running center which will be shown later on and then the outside diameter will be turned off to a specific size please observe if we now look where we want it to drill then we can see 
this drill, which is a normal drilling head attachment, you insert in here. One way it won't fit. Just keep on rotating it to where you feel it wants to go inwards. Because it's tapered, it locks itself into position. The only thing you need to do, move it out slightly, and just a little bit of ramming gets it in there. And it's solidly in there. You don't have to worry about it coming out at any given time. As a normal chuck would work, you then clamp in your center drill, as we have used on the milling machine already. Then this, the back end, does have a stop to it, as can be seen on my right hand hand. You stop it, which locks it into position of move, moving forwards or backwards. The rotation at the top locks the spindle from rotating any further. We will now move it into a closer position. Lock. Move forward to where the part is. Please note these will be aligned as this has been done. If it is not aligned, please inform one of the instructors so we set it for you. Please note as with the milling machine, we always use cutting fluid. The speed is correctly set. We start up the leg and we push forward and draw as we would, noting that the tool is stationary but the part is turning. Before we engage the part, first switch off the machine, switch off the coolant, beware it might still be hot due to the friction, and then can, we can safely remove the center drill. The center drill will then be replaced by the desired drill which we are going to use. Also move into position. As can be seen, there are markings to indicate the depth which we want to draw if we desire a certain depth. Please note though that the tip of the drilling bit is at a 118 degrees and will not give you a square edge. We clamp it into position again and then by pick drilling it, we will then drill a certain depth with cooling. slightly add a running center and machine the outside of the pod. Please note if the extrusion that you are putting in here becomes too long for the diameter it will definitely start to wobble and may have the property of shooting out of the machine. Please take note of the diameter if unsure please speak to one of the instructors beforehand. Because we are working on the chuck, the emergency stop will now first be activated. Please note, all your readouts will not differ. The part is now located out, and as can be seen, to the depth which we have grabbed it in, and the length which is, is protruded outwards, this will definitely be unstable. For that, we turn back to the tailstock. 
To remove the drill is very easy. You just keep on rotating in an anti-clockwise direction and it pops out. We will now replace what was the drill bit with a running center. Again, we will feel where it wants to indent and just insert it as shown. We move the tailstock to the front. With the height of the tool still being set correctly, and we lock the tailstock into position. Please note, for the beginning of your workshop, never take more than one millimeter cut until you are very certain that you know how the lathe works perfectly. In small instances, please ensure to take smaller cuts, but ask any of the instructors if necessary. We will now turn on the machine, turn on the coolant, touch the outer diameter surface, set the digital readout to zero and take a one millimeter surface cut just to clean out the outer surface to get a good a nominal diameter where after we can work. Please note. has just been touched, thus we go, we stop the machine for safety purposes, we go to the digital readout, and the X rotation can get clear. This now will ensure that we know we take a one millimeter cut. Now, the one millimeter cut, if we set that dial now to minus or to positive one millimeter, Will that be in diameter or will that be in radius? Make sure of that before you cut as every machine may be different. There's our one millimeter set. And we will now take the cut. Using automatic speed, we can set it to a certain length We'll just, for, intro, for purpose sake, go to about 10 millimeters off of the chop. We will now activate the automatic feed. Please note, this shaving is one of an extreme long length. That may in any time start to bundle up. Please do not try and catch the shaving, remove the shaving by hand, or any such purposes. Because we are taking a very shallow cut, in this instance, it is not necessary to use coolant. Certain materials and certain depth of cuts do not need coolant, but please, if unsure, rather use coolant or ask an instructor nearby. Visually, we can start seeing a surface finish, which is very clean, very smooth, 100% brown, as the extruded material which you normally purchase at the shops is not perfectly round, thus not a good reference point for anything to work. As we get closer to the chuck, we will see that the shaving might start to pile up. Please do not afraid, be afraid as you have the necessary PPE equipment. We will now disengage the automatic feed were to be necessary, we would feed the last two or three millimeters by hand, as constant as possible, stop, turn off the rotation of the machine, extract the x-axis, and move back to your original position. As can be seen in the part that we have just laid, the surface finish looks good. If there is a poor surface finish, this might be to the wrong rotational speed or the wrong feed being used, please ask of the instructors to assist you. The tool may also be blunt or the height of the tool may not be set correctly. We will now examine the part. 
we turn off, we turn on the emergency stop, switching off the machine. We will remove the tailstock. We will remove the cutting edge. And an easy and simple lathing part has just been made with a hole and a good surface finish on the outside. Obviously, due to more cuts, more steps or a smaller diameter can be set. Please note, do not bring a 50 millimeter diameter shaft if you wish to have a 20 millimeter diameter shaft at the end. At one millimeter cuts, this may take you some time, saving a lot of time and definitely no wastage of material. Please note the shavings at the end. Do not pick them up if you are cleaning the machines by hand. Rather, use a tool, call one of the cleaners or ask one of the instructors. This is very important as those shavings are extremely sharp. Thank you very much for this lesson. Good day and welcome. We will now have a quick look at the sanding machine which we've got in the workshop. This can be used for any materials which cannot be used on the grinders. Thus, aluminium, wood, anything is permissible as this is exactly the same as using sanding paper. Please wear the appropriate PPE such as glasses, closed shoes, make sure there is no loose clothing, no gloves are permitted or anything that can get in the way. This, make sure the grit on the sanding paper is still good, make sure it's tight and running in a straight line. Also make sure the distance gap between the bed and the sanding paper is no less, uh, no more than one millimeter as the parts can get jammed in there and broke. Alright, we will now have a quick demonstration of this. Please make sure any loose clothing can't be caught. Please allow yourself some tolerances. This machine is nice to take off burrs, but please be aware the parts do become very hot due to friction. Thank you very much. In this short introductory video, we're just going to have a look at a bench grinder. All the bench grinders in the workshop are for steel only. Please note the signs on them. If any of this is trespassed, you will be chased out of the workshop immediately as this is very dangerous. Also, the clearance between the bottom plate and the grinding wheel itself has to be between one or two millimeter. If it is more than two millimeters, please inform the instructor so we can set it for you. This is very dangerous as if, if there is any chance of material being caught in there, it will try and stop the grinding wheel automatically and will break it into millions of pieces. Please beware of this. A short demonstration of how it's used is going to be shown now. Please wear the correct PPE such as safety glasses, closed shoes, again nothing that can get caught onto the machine is very important. Please adhere to all of these rules. The demonstration will now be shown. the machine come to a complete halt or standstill before operating on it. 
please have a look at the part and note that it, this is a lovely machine to take off burrs. This is not a milling machine. Please do not try and cut slots into complete parts. Rather deburr or make a part safe by taking off the sharp edges. Thank you for watching. Good day and welcome. This is going to be a short introductory video of how to use the vertical band saws. The workshop is equipped with two blind saws, one with a rough blade used for aluminium, one with a fine blade used for steel. Please note that the area you're working in is clean, tidy and unobstructed. Make sure you use the correct machine for the correct material use. We can view this one as aluminium only as we are willing to cut the sample that was milled prior to this. We're going to cut off one of the legs. Please note the band saws are not very accurate as a default. Make sure you leave enough room if you wish to have an accurate measurement. Please watch out as the band saw blades are made to go through steel. They will definitely not stop for you. Please ensure that your hands are clear of the machine when using the machine. Please make sure the electrical equipment is correct. You're using the correct material on the correct band saw. And Please remove anything again that can be in the way, such as watches, jewelry, loose hanging clothes, gloves are not permitted on these machines. Please ensure all of them, anything that can be used on the machines, uh, can be caught in the machines, is removed. We will now have a quick cutting demonstration after we've set up the machine. We've checked that we're using the correct material on the correct machine. Then we have an adjustment knob on the side. This can be loosened and the minimum height of the material being cut can be set. Please fasten the adjustment knob again. At the side of the machine, we can see that it is equipped with a start button which will start the machine and the off button which also acts as the emergency stop of the machine. If the machine is in any way doing strange things or sounds, please call one of the instructors just to have a look. Make sure the blade is tensioned correctly and not loose. Please ensure the blade is still strong. Make sure the blade is... sharp. And then we will continue with the cut. Please ensure your hands are free and cannot get into the blade as we are cutting. Thus, use them at both sides of the blade or use a wooden block to maneuver your part through. Please view. before removing any debris and beware the parts might still be hot. As can be seen on the part cut, it is very inaccurate so please use a file or other equipment to ensure your surfaces are clean before using them as this might be a cutting hazard. Thank you for watching this video. Good day. We will now start with a short version of the bending equipment and guillotine small hand tools which we have available. In our areas we have tools which can range up to 1.6 millimeters for the bending equipment as well as the shearing capacity of the sheet metal. We will quickly shear a piece of metal and then put a few bends in it. This is very nice to use on project as it is fast and quite sturdy. The demonstration of the guillotine will now be shown. Place the material to the desired depth, which can be set at the back if necessary. Make sure it is nice and flat. The sides can also be used to create a 90 degree reference to it, as well as a ruler attached to the blade distance. 
by pressing on the foot peg below the metal is sheared off and whether it be the desired length which you require or the front end please make use of that then it is sheared off 90 degrees as we have placed it to the corner we can now place it in our bending machine which is also equipped the green ones to 1.2 millimeters the blue ones to 1.6 millimeters please do not override these specs as this will definitely damage the punch or the die place the part clamp it inwards please make sure that all the correct ppe is used in the instance in the instance of bending it is definitely possible for the parts to shatter so please wear eye protection closed shoes and all the ppe needed once it's clamped in correctly, stand a safe distance and the material can be bent. It can now be removed, placed in, clamped in sturdy and bent again. There we have a fast and simple box that can be bent. Please make sure that parts the machine is cleaned before and after use please remember sheet metal is very sharp on the edges please make sure to remove all the birds before handling it thank you very much Behind me in this yellow cage is, our, is the workshop's welding bay. We have a MIG welder, a TIG welder and an ARC welder. Our TIG welder has the capability to weld on AC or DC, thus allowing us to weld aluminium, stainless steel or any other steels. Please, if there is any form of training that is necessary by you to use the welding bay, please inform one of the instructors. All their safety equipment is available in the welding bay it will be taught to you appropriately. Because welding is such a diverse part of engineering, demonstrations will not be shown depending on the project which is needed or is the welding equipment which is available. Please speak to one of the instructors should you require welding. Thank you.